Alright, so I'm just back from my first Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, and they advised me to continue playing drinking games on this channel, albeit without the drinking. Unfortunately, I do not have any friends who I can play with, so I'll just have to play a non-alcoholic game of Never Have I Ever with these flashcards. Never have I ever had sex before marriage. Of course not, what do I look like, the f***ing devil? Never have I ever trapped my girlfriend in a closet. I'm just going to skip that one. Never have I ever charged 600 euro to my parents' Sky Bill by playing Scooby-Doo on Sky Games. I was 4 years old, alright? Sky is the most popular TV service in Ireland and the UK, providing hundreds of channels that never have anything worth watching, on-demand services, and overpriced sports packages. However, with the proliferation of online streaming in recent years, Sky has declined in popularity, especially among the younger demographic. But there once was a time when Sky was the ultimate all-in-one multimedia package, back when Sky Games was one of its most beloved features. Sky Games could be accessed through the interactive section on the Sky Guide before its demise a couple of years ago. Looking back on it now, it was basically the precursor to free mobile games, web browser flash games, and Nintendo Wii shovelware titles. I remember playing Sky Games before smartphones even existed, so it was a unique service at the time. A lot of these games were free, but if you weren't careful enough, you could accidentally add a few hundred euro to your parents' Sky Bill and almost get kicked out of the house. There's hardly any footage of Sky Games online that I can use to refresh my memory of the service, but from what I've gathered, you could buy a Sky Games Pass for 150, and that would grant you access to 20 games for 24 hours. It may not seem like the greatest deal, but come on. This is a service that provided a previous Game of the Year winner, Coronation Street, and Game of the Year runner-up, Tom and Jerry Food Fight. One of the greatest things about Sky Games is that it didn't require additional accessories. When you think of a video game controller, something like this probably comes to mind. But you can't call yourself a gamer if you haven't used this to play games in your TV. This is what stupid millennials would call a remote, but my intellectual grandparents prefer to say zapper. The Sky Remote used a very simple control scheme, press the red button to open Sky Games, play the games with the select and arrow buttons, and repeatedly press back up when you realise that you just landed your family in crippling debt. And of course, there's a little compartment on the back where you can get some batteries for your Wii Remote. Sky Games offered a huge selection of games that had absolutely no right to exist, such as Deer and No Deal, Cow and Chicken, and Ben 10, Call of the Wild Mutt. Tom and Jerry Food Fight took existing to a whole new level though, because that game actually received a sequel. And another one. But the undisputed crown jewel of the service was a game called Beehive Bedlam, which is still the only video game that my grandmother has ever played. This game was the original Candy Crush, and I'm sure that it brings back nostalgic memories for a lot of people. The controls were simple, the music was relaxing, and the gameplay was satisfying. But with the entire landscape of casual games completely changing due to the rise of smartphones and tablets, Sky Games slowly faded into irrelevance, and it was ultimately discontinued on January 31st, 2015. Nobody wanted to play Beehive Bedlam on their TVs anymore, because it was a completely outdated medium that would be replaced by newer and more accessible options. Tom and Jerry Food Fight is now a Flash game, Beehive Bedlam was released on iOS and Android, and you can just buy a deal or no deal game for your Wii if you're a fucking sociopath. In retrospect, I think my love for the Sky Game Service is purely nostalgic. Of course I enjoyed playing Spongebob games with a TV remote, but the whole service was a complete money racket that got way too many children in trouble with their parents. As much as I'd love to see a Sky Games revival, I think there's a better chance of Bebo coming back from the dead. Sky may not offer this overpriced game service anymore, but they still provide hundreds of overpriced TV channels. However, a lot of these channels are pretty obscure, and they are neglected by most viewers. I want to give these channels the recognition that they deserve, so I am going to use this app to generate a random 3 digit number, and that number is the channel that we're going to watch. Alright, we got 906, so I am going to enter 906 into my Sky Remote and... Oh god. The adult section on the Sky Guide is the TV equivalent of the Deep Web. These channels can be accessed just as easily as any other channel from your Sky Remote. Enter 601 to watch Cartoon Network, and change that first digit to a 9 if you're a sicko who wants to see women in their underwear. Personally, as a wholesome Christian, I avoid all the 900 plus channels like the plague. These channels are more aimed towards your weird uncle who would watch them at 2am with the volume muted. We all know that these channels exist, and if you're being honest with yourself, you have probably looked up channel 906 on your Sky Remote at least once or twice. If you are guilty of this, then I've got a little message for you. 
These programs are pretty lame during the day, but if you watch them after the watershed, then let's just say you're going to need a long Bible study session to cleanse your brain afterwards. Based on the information I've gathered online, the most recognisable adult channel is Babe Station. All of these channels are almost identical though, and one simple description can be used to describe the plot of each one. A half-naked woman holds either a microphone or a mobile phone that looks like it came straight from the 1990s, and she performs some very anti-Christian gestures while waiting all day for somebody to call her. I'd imagine that anybody who actually spends money to call these numbers is incredibly lonely, and they must be desperate for affection. Alright, I'd appreciate if you could stop giving me those dirty looks. This girl has been patiently waiting for a phone call for the past 20 minutes, and I'm simply providing the company that she is looking for. I have never actually spoken to a girl, but I am charismatic with a capital K, so I will be fine. I don't want to pay for this service myself, so I am going to use the landline to ring Babe Station, and we'll see if they can justify charging 3 euro per minute. Hi, I just want to make something clear right away. I'm not looking for any funny business. I'm just wondering, who do you think will be the next DLC character in Super Smash Bros? Uh, personally, I think that... Well, that wasn't a great first impression. I could have picked a better conversation starter, and I jumped at her way too quickly. So I should keep it steady next time and introduce myself first. Hi, uh, just a quick little introduction. My name is Matt, but my friends call me King of Sex. Well, they actually call me King of the Virgins, uh, but you get what I'm saying. Obviously, the models over at Babe Station have no appreciation for real men, so that is completely their loss. You know, it's just occurring to me now that my girlfriend watches my videos, along with my entire family, and my parents are going to see charges from Babe Station on the phone bill eventually. I should pack my bags. Watching the adults' channels and ringing Babe Station has completely ruined my life. Not only have I destroyed what was left on my reputation, but I probably won't be allowed to live with my parents anymore. Hopefully it will be another few days before the phone bill arrives, and I should be able to keep under the radar until- Yeah, I'm f***ed. I deserve this. Here's a little lesson in trickery. This is going down in history. If you wanna be a villain number one, you have to chase a super-